Welcome to a new video and in today's one we're checking out the Toyota GR86. And you'll notice there's no fancy marks today because I thought I would give you the raw experience and all the sounds that come with driving a car like this. And powering this Mini Supra is a 2.4 liter naturally aspirated boxer engine from Subaru. And it puts out 174 kilowatts and 250 newton meters of torque. Now, while you might not think that's a lot of power for a sports car, when the car is as small and nimble as this and you put your foot down, and it rips forever and yes it is a manual and it's a six-speed manual with the longest gear ratios I've experienced in any car before it's so so cool because when you put your foot down it just goes and goes and goes and goes it just encourages you to keep pushing this car and driving it but the great thing about driving this car is it's a people's sports car because now I can rev and drive like that but everything is at legal speeds I'm not having to rev this car and then find oh damn I'm at 80 k's an hour but from first to second and enjoying the revs and the feel that this car gives you you can do that within legal speeds I almost want to describe this as the car enthusiast's perfect daily driver because there's nothing extreme about it it's completely livable from a day-to-day -day point of view it's not complicated either i mean you basically got a leather wrapped steering wheel you've got three pedals you've got a manual gearbox and you don't have any specific drive modes this is it you and the car okay there is the traction control so you can either turn traction off completely or you can put the car into track mode which doesn't really change much besides for i think a little bit of the accelerator but mainly the display in front here so if you hold this in you get more of a sports rally type of style display in front of you but i'm going to turn that off because i'd like to return this car untouched don't hate me for saying this but i could also see this as the everyday man's Porsche 911. So if you can't afford millions of rands on that, consider getting the GR86. It's rear wheel drive, it's manual. You've got a flat cylinder boxer engine, not necessarily a six cylinder, but you've got a four cylinder here. So a lot of similarities, but very different cars, but still something that you can enjoy so, so much. And I've luckily just gotten out of a load shedding area, which is not fun in a manual car, especially in the sands and traffic. Man, my left leg does not want to forgive me. I've never felt those pins and needles in my foot before after driving a sports car in manual. Okay, I am going to do a bit of a pull for you. I am at a robot now. I don't need the handbrake because I've got auto hold. Let's see. Still spun up the wheels. They're still spinning. that at 80 k's an hour which is the legal speed for this road so there you go a fun sports car that won't get you in trouble unless you hand the car back with damage if you use that button so be careful the gr86 looks quick even though it's standing still and that's thanks to this awesome design it's a stylish coupe with a long bonnet duckbill spoiler on the boots aggressive looking vents that actually work 18 inch black sports wheels relatively wide hips but to give it extra width you've got these exhaust tips that come out on each side and to give it extra sportiness you can see that the lights have got that treatment too the front ones have got these dark bevels while the rear lights look like they've got a bit of a tint to them so while this might not be the fastest sports car out on the market it definitely looks the part 
and it's leaps and bounds ahead of the outgoing GT86. Yes, this is very much focused as a sports car, but I must say the creature comforts in it to make it comfortable is quite impressive. So you've obviously got an air conditioner, you've got a glove box here that's bigger than a lot of sedans and SUVs that I've seen in a long time. Um, you've got the digital display in front of you, you've got the leather wrapped steering wheel, you've also got the separated climate control, you've got the infotainment chair for your Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It is wired though, it's not wireless, which is, uh, it's okay. But to access those USBs for your CarPlay, you go into the armrest at a simple click of a button and you've got your USBs down here with two drinks holders. And to close it, that's it. What I did find by using these cup holders here though is because it's a manual, you end up hitting them every time you change the gears, every time. But I think to alleviate that, they've also given you an extra two cup holders in each of the doors here, which are probably the preferred one to put it in because they directly straight up so you can fit everything nicely in there and they're quite big too. So if you've got those bigger water bottles, you'll fit them in there, no problem. To make it extra sporty inside here, you do have touches of Alcantara on top of the dash here and on the doors. So it makes it feel a little bit more sporty in here, which is quite cool. And the Alcantara continues on these sport seats that are actually really comfortable. They're supportive, but they're not too tight. So yeah, these are nice and they're not overly sporty or, you know, something you can't do many kilometers in. I'd happily do a nice road trip in these. It is a Toyota at the end of the day, so you wouldn't normally expect Alcantara and that sort of thing, but because this is the Gazoo Racing 86, you've got it. And the amount of grip on this car is incredible. The way that you can throw it into corners and the way that it just handles and sticks, it just makes us drive so much fun. And that's all thanks to the tires that come standard on this car, which are Michelin Pilot Sport S's. I'm sure you could see in the back here that there are two seats. They're definitely not for human beings. Um, maybe baby ones, like babies in car seats potentially, but that's literally about it. And maybe a little bit of extra storage. So you can chuck your bags in the back there, but don't expect anyone with a living heartbeat to potentially sit there with grown legs. And then talking more about the practicality, there is a boot. It's not a hatchback, so it's, you're not gonna benefit from the extra space, but it is an actual boot that you've got there. So once it's open, you'll find that the space is bigger than expected. Although the problem there is that it's very narrow. So I think that's also it comes down to the fact that it is rear wheel drive. So that is eating into the space in the boot back there. But a nice touch is that you do have a full size spare wheel. And adding on to the infotainment, you're able to access the rear view camera, which is also a nice touch because back there, you can't really see too much down below um, and with the park sensors it makes accessing any parking or anywhere you go really easy and then there's the pricing and if you're looking for the enthusiast spec you're gonna be looking at about 755,000 Rand and by enthusiast spec I simply mean the entry-level one this one with the six-speed manual but if you want to go automatic and you know not as traditional and mechanical and one driver one car then you're going to look at 795,000 Rand for the addition of the automatic gearbox. But don't get that one. Get this one. An overall price is one thing, but what's more important is what it's going to cost you each month to live with. So what's the cost of ownership? Check this out. And now it's time for the verdict in the form of the GDR test. Should you get the car, should you drive the car, or should you remove it from the list of cars that you're looking at? And I would definitely say go and get this car. If you're a car enthusiast or petrol head that's looking for something quite mechanical, back to basics, and fun, nimble, it's got the right amount of power for what it is, then the GR86 should be up there on the list of cars for you to get. So if you're in the market for a GR86 or even a GT86, then make sure you check them out on changecars.ca.za. They're a website that sells new and used cars, and they're approved by all automotive manufacturers as well as Discovery Insure. And they vet every single dealership that sells cars on their website. 
so you know that whatever car you're going to end up buying, it's going to be of great quality. And they're a proud partner of Great Danish Reviews. So if I'm telling you to trust them, do it. So thanks for watching another Great Danish Review. If you enjoyed this, please really drop a like below. And if you want to see more car reviews like this and other car related content, then make sure that you subscribe because you don't want to miss it. And until then, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.